Hi everyone, and welcome back to My Hero Academia Podfix. Today I'm going to be continuing on with the Deku Dio series, and today we'll be covering chapter four, entitled To Engineer is Human. Really excited to continue this fic. Let me know any thoughts or reactions you guys have to this in the comments below, and we'll go ahead and get started. Izuku bent over his desk with a frown, madly scribbling on the numerous notebooks sprawled out in front of him. What are you up to, Deku-kun? Uraraka questioned, peering over his shoulder from behind him. Hmm? Izuku murmured absently. Deku-kun! Uraraka poked him gently on the cheek. Anyone home? Izuku startled. Ah! Oh, sorry. Uraraka-chan, I didn't see you there. I noticed, she giggled lightly. What are you working on there? I'm brainstorming storming some costume changes, Izuku bit his lip. The provisional exams sound hard, and it seemed like a good idea to follow Aizawa Sensei's advice and change my costume before the actual exams. Oh, same, Uraraka replied. I was thinking of heading down to the sport labs later today to ask about it. You want to go together? If I finish planning out my changes in time, Izuku agreed, I'm still figuring out some stuff. That makes sense. Well, I won't distract you any longer. See you later, Deku-kun. Uraraka waved cheerily before heading to her own desk. Izuku gave a short wave and turned back to his notebooks. The most important thing Izuku needed to figure out before the provisional exams is what medical supplies he needed and how he was able he was going to be able to acquire and carry them. Sighing, Izuku snapped his notebook shut and headed over to where Aizawa Sensei was pretending to be asleep. Sensei, Izuku asked. Hmm? Aizawa rolled over in his yellow sleeping bag, cracking an eye open. What is it, problem child? I was thinking, for the provisional exams, that is, it might be a good idea for me to bring some first aid and supplies, nothing too complicated, Izuku assured, but given how often I get injured and the fact that the exam seems like it may have a rescue component. It's a good idea, kid, Aizawa sat up. We usually don't cover emergency first aid until later this year, but most heroes carry at least a small kit. Great, Izuku smiled in relief. I'm going to go to support to see about getting more pockets to carry supplies, but I was wondering who I should talk to about acquiring the actual medical supplies. I'm sure Recovery Girl would be more than happy to talk to you, though what you may want and how to get it, uh, I'll write you a pass so you can see her. Thank you, Aizawa-sensei. It's my job, problem child. Aizawa huffed softly, handing over a quickly scrawled hall pass. Now let me go back to sleep. Izuku grabbed the pass and practically ran to Recovery Girl's office. Recovery Girl Sensei, how on earth did you manage to injure yourself? You haven't even had practical training today. Recovery Girl threw her arms up in exasperation. No, no, I'm completely fine, Izuku hastily waved his arms in front of him. I actually had some questions for you, if that's okay. Hmm, all right, what did you want to ask me? Thanks. Okay, so basically, the provisional licensing exam is coming up. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a rescue component, and even if there isn't, given my propensity for injury, I figured it would be a good idea to incorporate some basic medical supplies into my equipment. Recovery Girl raised an eyebrow. Well, now, it isn't often hero students come to me about that. I fully approve. Come sit down and we can talk about options for you. Izuku followed Recovery Girl to her computer and took a seat on a nearby plastic chair. Why were the, car the chairs in here always so comfortable? I always made a list of, or I actually already made a list of what I think I may need, if you want to look at it, Izuku offered. Pass it over here, Sonny. Recovery Girl stuck her hand out. Izuku obliged, opening one of his notebooks and passing it over. Recovery Girl's eyes grew wider the further she read down the list. Um, is it okay? A portable oxygenator, NC tubing, naloxone? This goes way beyond basic first aid. Do you even know what all of this is? Um, Izuku grimaced. He had known that this could lead to questions, but he had been hoping, perhaps naively, that Recovery Girl would just go along with it. Izuku decided to offer a half-truth. Yeah, I do. I know you know about how I got my quirk and that I was quirkless before. What do you know about medical care for people who are quirkless? I know how to perform an appendectomy, if that's what you're getting at, Recovery Girl offered. Not exactly, Izuku rubbed the bridge of his nose. What I'm trying to say is that quirkless people don't have access to traditional medical care. No one will treat us. Allegedly, it's due to a lack of exper expertise on our unique needs and liability issues. But the reality is that they just don't want to waste precious beds and supplies on people who they assume won't have a quality of life anyways. I wish I could say that re surprises me at all, Recovery Girl frowned. But it doesn't, really. So the only place you can get care, then, is an ER? 
If only. Now, Musutafu Memorial has a blanket no treatment policy for corkless patients, even in emergency situations. When I say no one will treat us, I mean no one. What do you do then? If anything, being quirkless means that you probably need more access to medical care than the average quirked person, both due to the unique biological features of your bodies, like the appendix, which is known to rupture, and due to the level of harassment that quirkless people face. We learned to do it ourselves, Izuku offered. If you can believe it, I got injured more frequently and seriously during middle school than I do now. I learned to treat my own wounds from a young age. When I started making friends in the quirkless community, I learned to treat their wounds too. Not only do I know what NC tubing is, I've had to use it on friends before. That's illegal, recovery girl frowned. Yeah, but the law didn't really give us any choice. Quirkless people are the only ones willing to treat other quirkless people, but unless you come from a very powerful family who somehow isn't abusive, it is almost impossible for quirkless individuals to get emergency first aid certification, let alone a medical license. Why can't you get first aid certification? Because courses are only open to those with healing or otherwise medically useful quirks. It's easy enough to justify how pretty much any quirk could be useful in an emergency situation, but it precludes quirkless people from being able to sign up. I see. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone, recovery girl size. But I do need to evaluate your skills and certify you before you can have access to restricted supplies, including drugs like naloxin. And I just don't see how we will have the time before the exam. Izuku paused. It was going to be beyond risky, but maybe. I may have a way, Izuku said slowly, but it'll be late at night, and I need to know that you really won't tell anybody, even if you think it will help. Not Aizawa, not Nedzu, not the police. Is it something illegal? All I can say is that if word of this got out in any capacity, lives will be at risk. Okay, if that really is true, I promise I won't breathe a word. If anyone asks, I will claim patient confidentiality since you are my patient. However, I am a mandatory reporter. If people are being hurt, I will absolutely tell the authorities. I understand. That's all I can ask for. Thank you. Izuku offered recovery girl a sunny smile. I have to ask someone for permission, but if you're available, please meet me at UA's gates at 1515. I'll need several hours to evaluate you. That won't be a problem, Izuku assured. In the meantime, let's talk about your list. While you may not be able to use everything yet or it doesn't hurt to plan ahead, you've done a very thorough job, but there are a couple of things you probably won't need and others you're missing. Oh? The sting pads were a nice thought, but you're highly unlikely to encounter a person with m more than minor sting wounds, which can be treated by somebody else. If the wounds are major, then sting pads would not really be effective anyways. On the other hand, I strongly recommend that you carry a set of, a set of ampoules for sample collection. As a medical support hero, I can say that it saves a lot of time down the line to collect samples at the scene. And they're also useful for criminal investigations. That's a really good idea, Izuku enthused. I wonder if the support department can get some that won't break easily. I know glass is better for preventing contamination, but I need something that won't shatter or crack while I fight. I can supply you with some field-grade ampoules, like the ones that I use, which don't shatter easily. Thank you so much. Now, I would go talk to Power Loader about ways to carry the supplies that you want. I was planning to do that anyways, Izuku agreed. Thank you for all your help. I will see you this afternoon, Sonny, recovery girl smiled, and don't stress too much about the evaluation. I can always teach you whatever you don't already know. I'm not worried, Izuku said seriously. Anyways, thank you again, and I'll see you later. Izuku left the infirmary and leaned against a wall, pulling out his phone from his pocket. The chat for the nightingales. Hey, guys, so I kind of did a thing, and I, pr I, if she promises not to arrest us, can I bring someone into work tonight? What did you do this time? <laughs> You're so dead. Fuck you, Natsuo. I didn't do anything yet. Basically, I need my EMS certification for an exam at school, but there isn't. Time to take the required practical tests. So you want an examiner to watch you on shift instead? Essentially. You go to a hero school. So that's what you meant by promising not to arrest us. Wait, you want to bring a hero to our mostly illegal clinic? I stand corrected. Now you're dead. Well, when you put it like that, but Recovery Girl did promise she wouldn't tell anyone, and I trust her. Wait, the Recovery Girl? Um, yes. Oh my god, I need to wash my scrubs, stat. Do you think she'll sign my stethoscope for me? Trust Zuku to get us out of, to get out of trouble by appealing to the boss's inner hero fangirl. I'm not a fangirl. This is purely professional admiration. Uh-huh. And tell me, how does that make you feel? Fuck you. 
I'm dying right now. So does that mean that I'm good to bring her? I'm okay with it, but I'll put out a poll. If anyone isn't comfortable, she can't come. It's recovery girl, okay? I admire her professionally, so sue me. A poll was created. And the rest of the participants of the chat started to place their votes. Izuku sighed. It would probably be a while before everyone could finish their voting. He may as well head over to the support department while he waited. He shot off a quick test, text to Uraraka, letting her know that he made his way to, down towards Class 1H. Hey, Deku-kun, Uraraka shouted from the other end of the hallway. Ida was close behind her. You ready to talk to the support department? Yep, Izuku agreed. You coming too, Ida-kun? Yeah, I am. As Ida answered emphatically, I wish to discuss options for cooling systems for my legs. That's a great idea, Izuku agreed. Before he could say anything else, there was a loud blast and the support department doors flung wide open, billowing back some black smoke pouring out. Izuku sighed. He had a feeling about what had caused that explosion. Uraraka screamed, looking terrified. Ida just blinked slowly at the destroyed remains of the support department. Quick, we must go inform one of our teachers. No need, Izuku sighed. I'm pretty sure this is normal of an occurrence here. What? Just watch. Suddenly, voices could be heard from inside the exploded room. Ouch! You know, you shouldn't try to mix everything you can find in the lab together like that. <laughs> Failure is the mother of invention, Power Loader Sensei. Thomas Edison said something like that once. The voice broke off and started coughing. <laughs> Even if I make something that doesn't work like I envisioned it, that doesn't mean it's a waste of time. You almost blew up the entire design studio. Will you please open your ears and listen to me for once, Hatsume? The smoke cleared to reveal a girl their age with pink dreadlocks. You know, you should listen to him, Mei-chan, Izuku interrupted. You of all people should know how important chemical safety is. Zuku-kun, Mei cheered. It's been forever. Well, you know how busy my schedule is. You're always welcome to come visit me at work. You know that. Let me know when there's something interesting to do, and I will, May winked. Izuku sighed. May had constructed a good chunk of the clinic's newer medical machinery from scraps. These days, she only came down to the clinic when something was in need of major repairs. Do you two know each other, Ida asked? Izuku and May both froze. The three of us paired up in the second round of the sports festival, remember? Uraraka interrupted. Right, May responded. That's where I know Izuku from. We totally became friends at the sports festival. Izuku res resisted the urge to do a face palm. Anyways, I actually came down here to look for you, Mei-chan. I have some costume and equipment change ideas I wanted to run by you. Yes, let's make babies, Mei cheered. Mei-chan, I know you like messing with people, but Ida-kun looks like he may just explode from that. Izuku sighed. Ha, Mei giggled. Sorry, Ida-san. Power Loader gave Izuku an unrestrained look of awe. How? How do you get her to listen to you? Teach me your secrets, I'm begging you. This time, Izuku really did facepalm. Mei-chan, stop terrorizing your teachers. If you don't behave, I'll tattle to Matsumura-san. Mei's eyes grew wide. You wouldn't. I absolutely would, Izuku smirked. While Matsumura-san was normally an absolute teddy bear, when he got angry, he was beyond terrifying. There was a reason he was so good at getting the clinic doctors to fill out their paperwork on time. Traitor. Behave. Fine, Mei pouted. Now, come on, let's design your babies. Everything gets approved by me first, Power Loader interrupted. Of course, Sensei, Izuku agreed at the same time that Mei asked, Do we have to? If you'd rather, I can just make a quick phone call and, Yes, sir, Power Loader Sensei, sir, Mei saluted. The two <laughs> handed into the support department, leaving three shocked figures in the hallway. What just happened, Uraraka asked. Ida just shrugged. Midoriya is my new favorite hero, Power Loader motioned as he was wiping a stray tear off of his mask. Huh? All right, so essentially, I'm looking to make th three improvements. Izuku turned his notebook to show Mei across the workbench. First, I need to s I need something to help stabilize and protect my arms. My quirk has injured them badly, and you know I'm how important my hands are as a surgeon. Easy peasy, Mei replied, making a few quick notes. Arm braces are not co uncommon for heroes and who pu with punch-based styles of fighting who want to try to protect their arms. It shouldn't be too hard to modify one to provide medical-grade support especially given my experience with mobility aids. That sounds great, Izuku grinned. I'm going to try shifting to a kick-based fighting style, but until I master it, I still will likely need to fall back on my arms some. Do you have any preferences in terms of design? 
Hmm, that's tricky. On one hand, I think it would be a good idea to have something bright and reflective on my costume for emergency response and rescue situations, and the arm braces would be a great way to do that. On the other hand, that would significantly impair my stealth. Hmm, good point. Have you thought about using color-changing fabrics in your costume? That's a thing? Yep, though it's not very popular among daylight heroes because the color change messes with the marketing. Essentially, we weave a bunch of micro wires through the fabric, which are programmed to conduct a low electrical charge, and this causes the special pigments in the threads to heat up and change the color of the fabric. I can program it to have up to four colors. That's perfect, Izuku shouted. Could you do a suit with three, my normal green, a very dark green for stealth, and a neon green for rescues? No problem. I probably won't have it ready before the provisional licensing exam, but I should be able to get you the arm bracers in time. Is there anything you need for the else for the exam? I was hoping it would be possible to get a pair of cargo pants to go over my bodysuit. I've decided it's high time that I start carrying medical supplies with me, so I'm going to need the store to carry them. I was wondering about that when you submitted your original design, May grinned. Izuku, without a hospital's worth of medical supplies? The horror. It's not that bad, Izuku protested. Oh, you absolutely are that bad. Luckily, I planned ahead and already have some designs for you. How does this look to you? I also added some pouches to your utility belt. Izuku looked down at the, the designs. It's perfect. Great. You said you had one more thing? Yeah, you can tell Power Loader that Recovery Girl has already approved it, but I was wondering if you had a way to design a compact portable oxygenator. The smallest ones on the market are about the size of a lunchbox, which is too big for me t uh, to lug around everywhere. Interesting, May's eyes lit up. That would also be an excellent commercial product. I know it's not an easy thing to do, and I probably won't need it one before the licensing exam, but the sooner I can get it, the better I'll feel. Leave it to me, May. Never backs down without a challenge. May beat her chest with a fist. Thanks, may John. I'll look forward to it. You know, you can always come to me, May said suddenly serious. Whether it be for the clinic, your hero work, or anything else, you're my friend and I want to help you. While I probably won't be as much help to you, I am also here for whenever you need me. Izuku, you're a surgeon. Let's hope I never need you, May laughed. But I get what you're saying, and thank you. You know, you really should stop by the clinic more often. Everyone misses having you around. Of course they do. I'm fabulous, May flipped her hair dramatically. But maybe I will. I miss everyone, too. Just not tonight, Izuku interrupted. After all that, seriously? So, Recovery Girl may be coming with me to the clinic tonight? Not that she knows what it is, and I don't want you to get caught in the middle of the crossfire if things go badly. Are you kidding me? I need my emergency medical license before the exam, and I couldn't think of another way to get the practical done in time. So you invited a hero to your shady, illegal underground clinic. Mostly illegal, Izuku protested half-heartedly. Okay, but the part you do is illegal. I mean, I can't really argue with that, but she promised not to arrest me. Izuku, I mean this in the nicest way possible, but you can really be an idiot sometimes. It's a calculated risk. Yeah, no, nothing about this is calculated. You probably just opened your mouth before your brain could stop you, and now you're stuck with the situation. Yeah, okay, you can stop now, Izuku sighed. His phone buzzed in his pocket. Well, it looks like everyone agreed to let Recovery Girl come anyhow. Izuku clicked the power bo button on the side of his phone and slipped it back into his pocket. I am not paying for your bail, May responded immediately. I'm not getting arrested, Izuku rolled his eyes. Recovery Girl promised she wouldn't arrest us as long as we weren't hurting anyone, and we're good enough at what we do to do more good than harm. Okay, but hear me out. Maybe you should take some extra babies with you to work tonight. My fusion-powered jetpack baby is great for escaping in a pinch. Right, because walking around wearing a giant nuclear jetpack isn't going to be suspicious at all. What's suspicious? Izuku whipped his head around at the sound of Uraraka's voice. Luckily, it didn't seem like she heard much. The fact that it's been half an hour since Mei-chan exploded anything, Izuku responded dryly. Mei just cackled madly in response. Right, well, Itakun and I are done talking with Power Loader Sensei if you want to run your stuff by him. It's almost 1500, so I'm going to head to the dorms and grab my uniform for work. Okay, thanks, Araraka-chan, Izuku smiled. Mei-chan and I are almost done. I'm going to be a couple of minutes late today, so I won't be able to walk with you. No worries, Dekakun. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Uraraka-chan, May waved, still fighting off the remnants of her laughter. Izuku turned back to May. Okay, let's run everything by Power Loader Sensei, Izuku started gathering his notebooks. I have to meet Recovery Girl soon. Oh, Power Loader Sensei, May practically sung. I have some babies I need you to approve. How is it that I can hear the emoticons in your voice? It's a talent, May smirked. 
All right, what have you got? Power Loader asked as he walked over to their workbench. In the short term, I have this design for arm braces, this design for cargo pants, and this for a bigger utility belt. May handed over three renderings. This is fairly simple, looks good to me. You mentioned this is for the short term. Ha! <laughs> May rubbed her hands together. I have two plans for the long term. First is to make Zuku Kun's entire suit out of a color changing fabric in order to give it stealth and rescue modes. Remake the suit. I mean, it's not a bad idea, but that's a major change. I'll have to send it in for approval. That's fine. The design shouldn't change at all. Only the material, Izuku added helpfully. I want to do a mixture of daylight rescue and underground work, so having a suit that can change colors depending on the situation would be very helpful. I see. Well, I'll see what I can do. You said two plans, so what else? I'll be creating a new baby, May ex exclaimed with a flourish, handing over a page of notes. A portable oxygenator. Why would you want something like that? I should be getting my EMS license in the next few days. In rescue situations, having an oxygenator available saves a lot of lives. Normally, we can't get them to a field until the ambulances get through due to their size. But if there's a way I can carry one, it means that I will have to be able to respond quicker and prevent avoidable deaths. If it helps, Recovery Girl has already approved on my request. All right, I'll check in with Recovery Girl. You are welcome to start working on it, he informed May, especially since it already has commercial applications. But Midoriya can't have it until I hear from Recovery Girl. Fine by me, May was practically, practically vibrating in place. I have so many ideas. Where's my drafting pencil? It's behind your ear, Izuku chuckled. Right, thanks. May grabbed the pencil and began to scribble on her sketch pad. Now, shoot, don't you have a definitely not at all bad idea appointment to get to? Shit, uh, shoot, I'm late. Izuku stood up abruptly and gave a short bow. Please excuse me, Power Loader Sensei. It's fine, kid, Power Lo Loader waved off. Just don't get into any trouble. I won't, Izuku promised. I'm actually meeting with a teacher. Thank you for everything. Izuku gathered up his books and booked it out of the support lab. Right on time, Sonny, Recovery Girl greeted as Izuku approached the gates. Sorry, I meant to be here earlier, but I got caught up in the support lab. It's a bit of a long walk, so we can take the bus if you prefer. I may be old, but I'm still a pro hero. A little exercise won't hurt me, Recovery Girl smiled. Now, are you going to tell me where we're going? You'll see, Izuku frowned grimly. Just remember your promise. Recovery Girl gave a short nod, and the two started in the long walk towards the clinic. That concludes us for Chapter 4 of Deku D.O. I hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did. Really like that Recovery Girl is finally involved in the fic, and she becomes more pertinent in the coming chapters. So let me go know any of your guys' thoughts or reactions, and be sure to, of course, always drop some fic recommendations that you have in the comments below. Thank you so much for listening.